Hello, I'm Robert of Dead Art Studios, and this is Painting with Dead Art Studios. Uh, welcome back. And this week I'm continuing my work on my volcano painting. And since last time, when you saw it in the last video, and I was actually painting a, a expressionistic but kind of realistic eruption out of the top, I've actually since then done quite a lot of different things to it on the eruption and decided to take a more abstract route which you can see at the top here and then ultimately I decided I'd gone a bit too far with it you know with those pinks and browns and the yellows and it all felt a bit too OTT and contrived so in this video I'm continuing with it I've not given up on the painting and I'm just putting some little barriers on the side there with tape which I made out of wood on my table saw uh, and I'm going to put some modelling medium, acrylic modelling modeling medium, that's easy to say, isn't it, uh, on, on the eruption. And I'm going to do that in a light blue and sort of create a blank slate there to start with. Uh, to sort of decide what we're going to try and do with it next. And I like the idea of maybe com combining a cool blue with the yellow and the black and I really like the bottom of the painting and I really like that yellow and I want to keep those and work with them and like keep them as a core fundamental ideas but it's the eruption that's been causing me trouble so in this video it's filmed in the daytime which is unusual for me uh, this is me uh, maybe wrecking <laughs> my painting uh, although I think I might have already done that this is me trying to de-wreck my painting and here I'm just using uh, golden acrylic paints, uh, some ultramarine blue and some primary cyan, just a tiny bit. Just add the colour to the modelling medium and we use a lot of the modelling medium in this one. It's, I'm trying to hold it in shot there and I've mixed, missed, but that's the uh, Liquitex modelling medium. And it's amazing how well it colours up with just a tiny amount of paint for so much medium actually that we're using this. So I'm just mixing it in on an ice cream tub lid and uh, spreading it on and that's all it's going to kind of be for this video but I thought I'd let you watch and see where I am at with this painting and it's been a difficult one I've been looking at it most days and adding bits and you can see there's quite a lot of work that's gone into it I put little silver trims in it I started off putting brown on the outside of the sort of red yellow eruption and that kind of looked all right and then I thought oh what about the pink and I like the pink and I put the green on and like, oof, I'm not so sure now. And then I put, well, I'll put some silver trims on. And then I was like, oh no, I don't know still, but I don't mind it. And then I put the yellow bit in the middle. And then I did a second colour on the brown. And then I'm like, no, this has gone too far now. And it's not what I wanted. And you know, it's only a little painting. I could have just throw it away or uh, start again, you know, on another one. But I want, I want to push on with it. And what I'm doing with this painting is trying to find a method, a way to call my own, you know, that makes me distinctively me as a painter, an artist, and uh, it's experimental, and it's trying to find something for something that's kind of new, but obviously following on from everything that's been done before in art, because it's impossible not to, uh, maybe that's not impossible, that's something to think about for another day, isn't it, whether you can just sort of pop out of fresh air, a totally new style whether that's been done before or whether it's always been sort of a progression an interesting thing to think about i'll have a think about that later maybe discuss that in another video uh but yeah so i'm just trying to find my own way through this you know and um i'll just keep going and going and going but it is kind of can maybe be a bit like you're making a soup and you're just adding a hundred different flavors and and it kind of messes it up but I suppose the advantage I've got here uh, with the painting is I can simplify it and go back to one colour and that's what we're doing here and I'm mixing in the blue into a big gunk of modelling medium which smells kind of nice but kind of toxic as well and it's kind of got a bubble gum but I don't know a kind of solvent-y bubble gum smell to it that I really quite like but also is a bit noxious as well so I'm just mixing it all in and that's kind of where we're at with this painting so I hope everyone's been having a good week and I am trying to keep my videos weekly so I thought I'd film this today and show you what's going on um, while I have the opportunity and 
yeah, I hope everyone's fine, and thanks for tuning in and watching, and very much appreciated. And I've been making my uh, short form videos, and I've been painting on paper a lot with acrylic, and just trying to, you know, really practice my style, practice my colour combos, a bit of mixing, different ideas, just see what comes out with some intuitive painting, you know, and if you do see my short form videos, uh, on YouTube or TikTok, you know, you'll see that I'm up to quite a lot, and uh, yeah, I'm definitely enjoying it. I'm going to varnish all those up, and I'm going to try and get them on my shop, which I'm starting to try and get my products together. Here I am just throwing the medium onto the paint, and the idea of the wood there is just to stop it running into the yellow, uh, and just trying the yellow bit, which I do actually like. I think there's going to end up being a little bit more work on, on the yellow anyway, but we'll see. So, yeah, so ultimately I'm going to try and get those works on paper sort of mounted and uh, I'll try and sell them for pretty inexpensive. You know, they're just studies, but that'll give somebody the opportunity to have a an actual painting. It's not a print from, you know, original and I can sell those cheap and... That'll clear out my uh, stores and uh, allow me to make more paintings. I'm not too worried about holding on to them. And then these are pieces, the piece that's here is probably a slightly more significant piece. And I have a couple of oils that I've put together as well, which would be going on the shop too. And uh, they're going to be more expensive. Uh, we'll just see how it goes, you know. I'm not sure how ready we are to sell but I think you just got to start I'm not a spring chicken anymore and I've been threatening to be an artist for many a year and instead I became a scientist and now I have the chance to be an artist and uh, I'm going to take it so I'm spreading it out here just with a bit more wood and I do like the colour this took on actually and I do want to do more work with this modelling medium, but it is terrible for cracking. And I was reading the instructions afterwards, and it does say you need to keep it wet to dry. It has to slow dry and to coat it, put a bit of like cling film or something on it so it dries slow. But I'm sceptical as to whether for the amount that I want to put. I mean, if you're thinking modelling, then you're thinking of using quite a lot of something, aren't you? But it says to apply it thinly in multiple layers. And I'm like, well kind of defeats the point in a way so uh, this uh, i've been looking at it as it's been drying it has cracked did expect that anyway you can fill it or you know it's an opportunity to put new colors into the cracks if they take a nice natural root or something that, that could be part of the art in itself so but it's just a new start a new place to start with it and we'll see what happens and like i say i do like the way it simplifies it and i do like the the color of the blue up at the top with the yellow and the black down there and really happy with my mountain and, I, uh, and my foreground and I just do want to keep that and then we shall, it'll need a bit of work on the top to blend the impasto eruption into the uh, less impasto foreground but we can do that with a uh, gloss medium uh, which is what I used for the most part on that bomb bit anyway and we'll get we'll get somewhere with this paint. We'll get a piece that I'm happy with at the end, you know. Uh, or maybe we won't. Francis Bacon, who's one of my... I, wasn't, I don't know if he's an inspiration. I guess he's an inspiration. He's certainly one of my favourite sort of painters. And, uh, just the character of him. If you get to see documentaries with him painting and him talking and everything, I, I find him really entertaining. And I love the way he thinks and stuff like that. And... He used to just destroy his canvases if he didn't like them, and uh, I understand why he would do that, but I think at this point of my painting career, I need to uh, just keep practicing and working them over and over. He did over 800 paintings in his career, and it amazes me how many paintings painters do, because the amount of time you can spend on a painting it, is obviously a lot of time, and to produce something like eight hundred paintings is that's a lot, a lot of paintings, isn't it? I'm a long way off of that, so. And I can only think of like ten of his that I sort of 
off the top of my head, no. And the fact that there's like another 790 out there, potentially. It's very interesting. In this modern age, it's interesting about how you go about researching all this stuff. In the old days, you'd go to the library, you know, and find all the sources and everything and uh, whatever journal articles there might be and stuff. And now you're kind of left with the internet, but then you just don't know what's real necessarily on there or, you know, whether it's second, third, fourth, fifth-hand information, you know. So to find out those kind of things would be quite interesting, uh, but also in some ways I think quite difficult now. Uh, it was probably difficult before, wasn't it? When you had to go and find it all in the library and stuff. In many ways, it's been a democratisation of information, so I shouldn't complain, really. So I'm just spreading this out, and I did originally want it to be kind of smooth, uh, but then I decided that that was not going to happen with a piece of wood, uh, and it was kind of sticky, so then I'm putting these waves in, and... Uh, I did like the waves and the way they turned out, um, but then as it's been drying, it has been cracking. But you know, we can we can work around that. Uh, I'm saying uh, a lot again today. I apologise. I've not got my best etiquette on with my video commentary, so I'm just putting the last bit on. And I did think about putting this in a table saw as well and kind of trimming it down. And I want to do that with one of my other paints. You know, putting it in on the profile on the side and then just taking a few millimetres off it and smoothing it out like that. So that might be an option as well. Uh, and I'm going to do it. I'm erring again. I'm annoying myself now. And, um, yeah, I'm going to do that with one of my, with my beach scene, my impasto beach scene. Uh, that's definitely going to happen. I think I've got an idea for that that may be kind of cool. So we'll try that out. And yeah, it's been a good week. I'm feeling better, healthier, stronger, as there's more daylight and things are getting better in that regard. So hopefully, it's going to be a good year ahead. So we're heading into the last sort of minute of the video here, and I'm just taking off carefully the side bits and quite pleased with how well it held back the medium from the yellow paint and created a nice defined border so that went pretty well and that's all I did today I did varnish some of my paper paintings and let them dry and sign them and things and there's going to be a bit more tinkering like that tomorrow and hopefully soon I'll be back with another painting video I don't know if it'll be this or something else but I do hope you come back and tune in and thank you for stopping by and uh, take care and bye-bye.